Everyone has the right to freedom of thought, conscience, and religion. This right includes freedom to change his religion or belief, and freedom either alone or in community with others, and in public or private, to manifest his religion or belief in teaching, practice, worship, and observance. I was a Catholic priest in my country, El Salvador. I left the priesthood and uh, I have been able through the years, the last 20 years, to establish relations with many people, different people, people of different beliefs. Not only Catholics or Evangelicals, Protestants, but also Jewish people, Mayas. And what I have learned from that experience of sharing life with different people is that there is something that is very deep and very important in us human beings that we have the right to maintain, to share, or to change our beliefs if we need that, if we believe that that is something necessary. So spirituality, I would say, is something deeper than religions. Everyone has the right to freedom of opinion and expression. This right includes freedom to hold opinions without interference and to seek, receive, and impart information and ideas through any media and regardless of frontiers. If you don't have the possibility of expressing yourself in a political way, in an artistic way, in any way that you, you want, you are not really a human being. You can be and a machine or something like that but if you cannot have the possibility to look for information to analyze information and then to express your view about the this uh, information you are not a human being everyone has the right to freedom of peaceful assembly and association no one may be compelled to belong to an association just so many of our individual interests and so much of our autonomy um, can only be protected by banding together. Right? And there's, a, there's an importance to the idea of having a collective voice uh, which people ignore in modern society. Um, and you see it, when I mean, you see it clearly in unions, right? we're all familiar with that. You know, oppressed people need to band together against big corporations in order that each one of them can have their voice and interests protected. It's not a matter of burying their identity in some big organization. It's a matter of trying to redeem their personal autonomy. Um, and really the sad thing is in modern society, more people don't recognize that. They still think that you know, collective organizations, collective associations um, are for just the poor and oppressed. Um, and they're not recognizing the way to which you know, their own interests can only be represented um, by banding together various kinds of associations.
Everyone has the right to take part in the government of his country, directly or through freely chosen representatives. Everyone has the right of equal access to public service in his country. The will of the people shall be the basis of the authority of government. This will shall be expressed in periodic and genuine elections which shall be by universal and equal suffrage and shall be held by secret vote or by equivalent free voting procedures. Most cave drivers in New York City all have an opinion and then they become very animated about their rights or what the government should be doing or what the mayor should be doing and they uh, no matter what the nationality is, then they feel that they could go down to City Hall and demonstrate in front of City Hall. And this is good because this shows participation. A lot of these people are not citizens, and yet they feel in this country they have the right to go down to City Hall and the right to stand out there and yell and scream. And they don't have to worry about getting hauled off and thrown in a prison or physically being harmed. And this is important because we serve notice to our government, listen. And that is so important. You have to say it over and over and over. Listen. Your representatives have to listen to the people, not us listen to the representatives. Everyone, as a member of society, has the right to social security and is entitled to realization through national effort and international cooperation and in accordance with the organization and resources of each state of the economic, social and cultural rights indispensable for his dignity and the free development of his personality. Well, just look at the word. It has the word person, it has the word personal in it. It has to do with personness, the thing that makes one individual different from another individual. So I would see con personality as that particular constellation of qualities, of talents, uh, uh, that uh, make an individual unique, uh, that separates one individual from another, but uh, since all individuals have different things uh, all together, presumably they provide a, uh, uh, a comprehensive basis for a society with the proper distribution of talents and abilities that a society needs to, to flourish. Everyone has the right to work, to free choice of employment, to just and favorable conditions of work, and to protection against unemployment. Everyone, without any discrimination, has the right to equal pay for equal work. Everyone who works has the right to just and favorable remuneration, ensuring for himself and his family an existence worthy of human dignity and supplemented, if necessary, by other means of social protection. Everyone has the right to form and to join trade unions for the protection of his interests. I'm not sure why work and existence are connected, actually. I'm not sure whether we need to work in order to justify our own human existence. And I'm not sure whether work is necessary in order to have human dignity. I wonder what it would be like if we had a world where people worked because they wanted to. Everyone has the right to rest and leisure, including reasonable limitation of working hours and periodic holidays with pay. I suppose rest, we could, we could understand rest as merely recuperating one's labour power. So, um, 
you're entitled to rest in order that you can work sustainably over a long period. Um, and maybe that's why they stress leisure as well. Right? If, I mean, the, having a right to rest then would really be merely a protection against being overused by one's employer. Um, and that's tremendously important. But I don't think it's the only thing which individuals can demand of their employer, employers as well. They can also demand sufficiently good pay rates and working conditions that they can devote some, some of their time to activities other than labor. Some of the things which make life worth living rather than which are just means to uh, subsistence or means to other activities. has the right to a standard of living adequate for the health and well-being of himself and of his family, including food, clothing, housing, and medical care, and necessary social services, and the right to security in the event of unemployment, sickness, disability, widowhood, old age, or other lack of livelihood in circumstances beyond his control. Motherhood and childhood are entitled to special care and assistance. All children, whether born in or out of wedlock, shall enjoy the same social protection. I came here in January of 2000. It was a very hard thing for me to do because I had to leave my two-year-old son behind. It wasn't like by choice, it was by force. I did everything I could to bring him here, but there was nothing I could have done. The fact that he wasn't born here, I had to leave him behind and, you know, have, he, he have to, I have to wait five years until he can be with, come over here and be with me. And in my country, we like overpopulated and to get a job, a good job is hard. A good job is hard to find in my country. So I'll be there with him, he'll be with me and everything, but when it's time to give him things, he'll want things and I'll not, I won't be able to give it to him. You know, and that's why I'm here. You know, it's for the sacrifice, you have to sacrifice somehow. Each, each day, every day when I get up, I always feel like something is missing. <laughs>